Hey, my phone feels hot. This brand sucks. Oh my God, it's overheating. So much heat. Now, this is something we've all read in user reviews, comment section, social media, etc. But how accurate is it? If your phone feels hot, does it necessarily make it a bad phone? And if a phone runs cool, does that necessarily make it a good phone? Now, there have been quite a few misconceptions on this fact. So I decided to put together this video to show you guys how heating works and the effect it has on our phones. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and let's get started. If you do end up liking this video, please don't forget to turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon. Now, when it comes to smartphones in 2018, almost all of the top tier chips are paired with some sort of liquid cooling. So let's start right there. I'm sure most of you are aware about how liquid cooling works, but if you aren't, here's the short version. We have a copper heat pipe or a vapor chamber that contains a tiny bit of liquid. One part of this chamber is in contact with the processor. Now when you do something intense like say play asphalt 9, the SOC gets pushed meaning it heats up, this turns the liquid into vapor which then goes to the opposite end of the vapor chamber and there it gets cooled down. Once it cools down, it condenses back to liquid and it comes back and that cycle keeps continuing. Now for our test today, we chose three different smartphones. First, we have the POCO F1 with Qualcomm's flagship chip, the Snapdragon 845, you know, the budget flagship. We then have the Galaxy Note 9 with the best chip that Samsung has to offer, Exynos 9810. And finally, we have the ROG phone with the speed bend 845 that's been tearing up benchmarks on the Android side of things. So for the first part of this experiment, we decided to game for 15 minutes, run Asphalt 9 on each of these phones to simulate intense usage conditions. Now don't worry, this is not a regular gaming test, so I'm not gonna bore you with the same gameplay footage. I'm gonna do that a little bit, but not as much as I would with a regular gaming review kind of video. Now this is just to basically give you an idea of how cooling works to establish a baseline. First up, we have the POCO F1. After 15 minutes of Asphalt 9 with Game Booster on, these were the temperatures. The highest is around the cameras and we can spot a maximum of 41 degrees C there. The rest of the back has a pretty even spread of 37 to 40 degrees Celsius. The plastic or Kevlar is just an okay conductor of heat, so it makes sense that the external heat is not high. Moving on to the Note 9, after a similar 15 minutes of Asphalt 9 on Full HD Plus, by the way, we get a pretty even 39 degrees Celsius everywhere. The edge along the metal rim near the Bixby button, that's 42, almost 43 degrees Celsius. Now this is because the copper heat pipe inside the Note 9 is located there in that region. And since it is also in contact with the metal sides, metal transmits heat better, hence the higher temperatures. They just do get a little warm to touch, but it is not uncomfortable heat. Anything under 45 is not uncomfortable at all. Finally, we have the ROG phone. For this test, for a level playing field, we turned the screen refresh down to 60Hz and turned on X mode to ensure that the clock speeds are up. Now time for the temperatures. We have a speed bend 845 here, basically a higher clocked version. Yep, we have 40s all around with the temps as high as 44 degrees Celsius around the cameras. And let's check these copper vents. Well, that's 46, even 47 on these things. So going by what we have seen so far, the POCO F1 is the coolest, the ROG phone is the hottest. So Xiaomi has done something good and Asus have screwed something royally, right? Well, not really. Here's where the second part of this video comes in. Now the external heat you feel is a direct result of the internal heat going out, right? So not feeling the heat is not necessarily a good thing all the time. Because there are two ways to control heat. One, have it go out faster so that you keep things cool or to have less of it produced. To have it go out faster, now that's what the ROG phone does. It takes all the heat and vents it out via a point. It's gotta go somewhere, right? Now to have less heat generated, well, we need to stop the chip from getting as hot or rather when it gets hot, the phone kind of scales back performance and that is what is happening with the POCO F1. Now let me show you that. So looking at the graphs, you can see how fast the POCO F1 ramped down when it was hit with a CPU intensive workload. Now this test isn't representative of real life situations as there are rarely any apps 
that would require peak clock speeds from an 845 for a long period of time. But it works great because I want to show you the throttling effects without making this video 3 hours long. So some of you may have noticed the ROG phone ramps down the clock speed with time uh, while on the POCO side of things it stays on max. Now don't pay too much attention to that, that's just cause of a bug in the software uh, of this app. Now on the note side of things you can see that it too is struggling to deal with the intense load on the CPU. At the end of the day the POCO might run a few degrees cooler but that is ultimately at the cost of performance since it is constantly churning out lower compute numbers than the ROG phone. Now that doesn't mean the POCO F1 is bad, it just means that the ROG phone is much better at sustaining peak performance for a longer duration. It is the best gaming phone out there for a reason, right? Now the POCO F1 again, it's not a knock at it, it's still gonna you know, run pretty much anything you throw at it. It might scale back a little but with day to day use you're not gonna really notice it. This is just a theoretical explanation and it's basically what it boils down to. Liquid cooling, if effective, will keep your phone's internals at a lower temperature so that you get to sustain peak performance longer. Yes, it does heat up the exterior a bit more, but like I said, the heat has to go somewhere and it is the job of the heat pipes to radiate heat to the outside so that the processor inside doesn't need to drop performance. So the next time you're gaming and you find a spot to the back of your phone that feels hot, well, that might not be an issue. You don't really have to worry about it. Now, all that said, there are times when heating might be an issue. Sometimes whether it's incorrect software, a little, some weird app that's kind of continuously costing, I mean, causing the clocks to be boosted or some crazy bad hardware. For some reason, the phone decides to heat up when it's not being pushed. You guys know my favorite example here, you know where I'm gonna go. The Moto G4 Plus, now that came with the infamous Snapdragon 615, which was very well known for overheating, even when you weren't doing something intense. Despite aggressive throttling, you know, the frame rate stuttered, the phones was totally, totally stuttery, but it still managed to find a way to heat up. Now that's an issue, but these days there's rarely any phone out there that actually overheats with the smaller chips inside, the lesser heat being generated, better thermal handling, it's a rare occurrence. And the reason I'm doing this video is because I'm seeing a lot of negative marketing being employed, a lot of scare tactics being employed by someone or the other all the time. And I see people falling victim to this. Uh, you know, somebody says, hey, this phone overheats, and then they buy that phone because, hey, it's good value, and then they touch one part of it and like, okay, I read somewhere that it overheats and hey, I'm feeling some heat, maybe my phone is flawed. I, I see that happening a lot. So I just wanted to come out and try to, you know, explain what actually happens with overheating uh, and when is it actually overheating and when is heat okay, when you're charging it's okay, when you're playing a game, uh, one or two points, it's okay, it's not really that bad. A metal phone is gonna feel hotter than a plastic bag. These are all general stuff that I, kind of wanted to convey to you guys and I feel this video uh, might have done that. If you feel it has, then please share it with friends and family. Uh, and well, if you liked it, if you didn't like it based on that, go ahead, hit that thumbs up, thumbs down. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Don't miss out on any of our content. And I guess that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.